Let me just start by saying that I'm Paulette Musselman, uh, originally from New Jersey, but my husband's army, and we traveled around for many, many years. He retired in the end of 2014, um, and we moved and settled into Port St. Lucie, Florida. Um, we've only been in this house about a year and a half, and a little over a year ago, I met my friend Gloria, who's also a neighbor in my neighborhood, and she's the one that got me introduced into butterflying. Um, really, it was, I wanted to plant flowers to attract butterflies because I would like to see more flying around my yard. Um, it really was not to raise butterflies. Um, but Gloria does raise butterflies and she has tons of different flowers that attract the butterflies, different species of butterflies. And um, she showed me what she was doing and I would always say, oh, that's interesting, that's so cool, let me take pictures, let me take pictures. And uh, sometimes you, end up doing something that you have no idea you were going to do. Uh, we went to um, Pinder's Garden Center, which is a local garden center down in Palm City, about 15 minutes drive from our house. And of course, I wanted flowers to attract the butterflies. And they actually sold what's called a butterfly bucket. Um, you can put on the slides, Carolyn, or... There you go. And um, so yeah, so this is the beginning for the love of butterflies, the beginner's love. And like I said, I just put this together because Linda requested that I do a presentation on the butterflying that I do here in Florida. Um, and so go ahead to the next slide, which is already about um, my, my um, visiting the garden center and buying a butterfly bucket. And the butterfly bucket happened to contain Going to the next slide. Guys. Yep, this is one of those technical difficulties. There we there go. You go. <laughs> okay, so uh, let let me just say I have always loved being outside. Love anything to do with nature, animals, uh, birds. I'm a big birder and taking pictures. And I'm not trained in anything. I'm not trained in taking pictures. I'm not trained in anything. I just do it for fun. Um, and most of the pictures, I would say all the pictures that are mine and 90% of what's in this presentation are mine. Um, Oops, sorry. They were, they, that's okay. They were taken on my phone. I have a camera, but it takes longer to upload pictures and stuff like that. So I try to get most of my pictures, everything's quick on my phone. So um, my friend Gloria introduced me to what she was doing with the butterflies that she was introduced to by another friend she met at a garden, actually Lowe's or Home Depot Garden Center, I believe. And um, we visited Pinder's and I bought the butterfly bucket. The monarch that you see in this picture here is actually nectaring on pentas. The butterfly bucket had nectar plants and hose plants. We'll talk about more of that later, but this had pentas and milkweed and uh, salvia, Oh, and there you can't see in this picture, but it also had fennel and parsley and basil. So, okay, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so there are <laughs> multiple thousands and thousands of species of butterflies. Um, one site that I used to find some information said over 17,000 species. Another site, I guess maybe they're still counting, <laughs> that said upwards of 20,000 species around the world. Um, and 750 of those species are found here in the United States. Um, I wanted to give you a little information because I know most of you are up there in Virginia and I did live in Virginia in Charlottesville for six years from 2007 to 2013. I worked at a winery, I still work at wineries there and I met Linda and that's how um, I got associated with her and the center. Um, and Linda worked with me at the winery. Um, so the Virginia state butterfly is one of the very, very pretty, pretty yellow, sometimes not yellow, sometimes black, but, and the females will also have some blue around the bottom edge, but up in the right hand corner there, that's called a tiger swallowtail, one of many species of butterflies and one of men, um, swallowtails come in many different varieties. That's the tiger swallowtail, and that's adopted as the Virginia state butterfly. Um, our butterfly here in Florida is the one in the bottom right corner, and that's called the zebra longwing. Um, and my friend Gloria actually has a host plant and she has successfully uh, raised some zebra longwing butterflies from the egg through the caterpillar to the butterfly. Um, I do not have their host plant. I try to hope that they'll land here on, on a nectar plant. I see them zooming by, but they don't, 
they don't stop or they haven't yet. Um, and we don't see very many of them in our neighborhood for some reason. Though. But um, we'll talk more about what ones we do see here in a little bit. Um, the middle of butterfly, many of you might think that's a monarch. Um, and if you haven't read the slide detail, it's actually not a monarch, it's a queen. Um, and it's not a queen of monarchs, it's literally the name of the butterfly is the queen butterfly. Um, and it just happens to look, especially in this position with the underwing showing, so when the wings are folded up and the butterfly sitting, the, that you're seeing the underwing, the upper wing will be the top side that you don't see unless they're sitting and you're up above them and they have their wings open. Um, so the underwing on this queen resembles a monarch. Um, but if you notice, there's a lot of dots in their window painting areas and um, not the edges, the ones in the center, the right, and then up in the top wing as well. Those monarchs do not have the dots like that. And a queen butterfly is browner. It's not as um, orangey red, it's a more of a brown color. And I'm gonna show you another queen butterfly later on in my pictures so you'll be able to see the top wings and see how much different that top wing does look than the, um, than the monarch. Um, my landscapers are coming to trim shrubs, so I hope it doesn't get too loud. I don't have any doors open, but they can be loud. I hope it's not that loud for you. Go to the next slide, please, Carolyn. Okay, so we talked about all those different butterflies. Oh, I, before we, before, I should have said the other two butterflies that um, I don't have pictures of in there. Um, and I don't have pictures up to show you, but maybe if you want to look them up on Google later, you can. There's two other butterflies that mimic a monarch. Um, one's called a viceroy. I've not seen one personally in real life myself. They're here, but I don't see them. And the other one's called a soldier. And the soldier looks a lot more like a monarch than even the queen does. But there's a, a line that goes across the lower two, the wings, they actually have four wings, two upper, two bottom. Um, when they're open up, you can see the four pieces. Uh, the lower two from the top view of a soldier, it, it has a line that goes across the bottom. So if you Google that later, you'll be able to see. I'm sorry, I didn't pick those pictures up to, to show you. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here are some of the visitors that have visited some of my plants in my yard and that I've taken these pictures. Um, the, and I have labeled them all. So the top left is an orange sulfur and I did not raise any of these. However, the one in the top left, that is my hand. I released that one for my friend Gloria. She does raise these. She has the host plant for that and we'll talk about the host plant. Well, actually I'm not bringing that up on a slide, but. The host plant for the orange sulfur and for most sulfurs one are in the cassia family and she has popcorn cassia which grows very big the flowers you'll see later because i have a picture with eggs on it and um the flowers are um they smell a lot like popcorn strangely enough so that's the name um, popcorn cassia and she had raised this and she was away and knew that She'd have butterflies um, e-closing um, and asked me, I would, I would cat sat for her, I cat sat her caterpillars and her kitty cats. So um, I released this one for her while she was away last summer. Um, and that's the orange sulfur in the top. The zebra swallowtail in the middle. Boy, was I shocked. I keep my desk in the corner of my kitchen by my sliding glass doors because I specifically want to see what's going on outside. So if I'm working on my computer or if I'm playing on my computer, I just want to be able to see out my back door and see what's going on outside, whether it be the birds or the butterflies. And my butterfly bucket is right out the door of going from our screen pool enclosure to the outside. And I was shocked to happen to catch this zebra swallowtail nectaring on that red penta. Um, it's a very large butterfly with really long tails, as you can see. The picture might not do the justice of the size, but I wanted to have it um, have it so that it fit in the same frame as the other butterflies, but it's larger than those butterflies that are there. 
Um, it's beautiful. And even it's, it's um, underwings, which this is you're seeing the upper wing. The underwings have even a little bit more colors around the edges. It's, it's a beautiful butterfly. I haven't seen it here since, but I was lucky to catch a lot of pictures of that one that day. Okay, the one on the top right corner that's nectaring on the purple border weed, that's a little fiery skipper. And they're really not much bigger than your thumbnail, maybe a little bit bigger than your thumbnail. They're, they buzz by, or I should say, I shouldn't say buzz because that's a B term. We'll say flutter, they flutter by, whiz by very, very quickly. But when they're nectaring, they don't care what you do. If you want to take pictures, they'll sit there and pose while they're nectaring. So um, um, he, they've been visiting lately. This one was visiting um, on the quarter weed, but they, they'll nectar on most of the flowers that are out in the garden. Um, the bottom left corner is a white peacock. And it's so funny because technically, almost every day in my yard, there are white peacocks all over the place. Um, there's more white peacocks, I think, than monarchs. I don't raise them. I've not seen an egg. My friend Gloria happened to find one, one caterpillar that we believe was um, a white peacock recently crawling on her, um, her uh, pa pa patio pavers. Um, and I forget to see if, if it has eclosed to an adult butterfly yet with her or not. But um, they, uh, they had their bog fruit is one of their host plants. Apparently it gets these adorable little flowers on it and they'll lay their eggs on those host plants, which apparently are very close to the ground. Those white peacocks, they hover all over the grass. They're always hovering all over the grasses all the time. Um, and they like to chase the monarchs out of the area if, they, if, they're, if they're visiting at the same time. Okay, the middle one is actually a butterfly. Some people might think it is a moth, but it's called Horace's dusky wing. Um, and it happened to be visiting. I didn't know the names of some of these until I take a picture, then I go and research, or I ask questions in a um, Google, face, I'm not a Google, a Facebook uh, group page. We have one for Florida butterflies, and I do have information in my notes for, there is a Greater Richmond, Virginia area, Florida butterfly group that's open to the public up in Virginia. So if you ever wanna join a butterfly group, there is one. And you know, Richmond's only an hour away from Charlottesville, so you're considered great, greater Richmond area. Um, and then that last one over there on the right-hand side is smaller than the picture looks. It's called the Great Southern White. I, I don't know the, the name, why it has the name. It's not very, it's not that big. It's not as big as that orange sulfur in the top corner. It's probably a little smaller than a monarch, actually. But um, it's mostly white with those black edges across the top of the, of the upper side of the wings, but if the wings were folded, you wouldn't actually see the black edges. You see a tinge of blue on its body, and that picture's not the best for showing, but the tips of its antennas are a turquoise blue. The little tiny tips of the antennas are turquoise blue. And that, if you take a picture of a southern white and you're not sure if it's a southern white, if you see those little turquoise tips, you know you've found a southern white. That, that's the only butterfly with those turquoise tips. Okay, next slide. Okay, so why are butterflies important? Um, they're um, almost as important as the bees. Well, there are, they are as important, they just aren't as prolific in the pollination, but that one of their major jobs is poll they're pollinators. Um, so they, you know, they fly from flower to flower and they pick up pollen and then they deposit pollen that helps. So um, they're very vital in our ecosystem. And um, a couple other things that they, they are vital for, and sometimes you don't want to hear this, but they're part of the food chain. They're food for other animals. I don't, we don't, we're trying to discourage it, but they're, they are preyed upon and, um, you know, birds and uh, lizards and um, spiders and ants. Mostly with the eggs, you're going to see the ants carry them away. Wasps will come and take little baby caterpillars. I have picture, a picture of that later on. But in this picture, the monarch and the bee are both on the quarter weed up on the side of my house at the same time. So it's nice to see them cohabitating together and working at the same, the same job of being pollinators. Um, 
And uh, there, another, they also will, um, butterflies are also a good sign of how healthy an environment is. So, you know, in the scientific world where they're checking things, that the butterflies are essential for that too. But we mostly know them as pollinators and they just bring joy and beauty by seeing them whizzing by. So I, I just love them. Um, now we get into a little bit more uh, if you are interested in butterflying, like I've all of a sudden become interested in butterflying. Um, next slide, please. The year, the, a year ago when my friend Gloria and I, we went down and we bought the butterfly bucket because I was there and I wanted to get flowers to attract butterflies. And I think I, I jumped the head a little bit because she knew how to do, take care of caterpillars and stuff. And she was showing me things and and at, at her house, and I'd be very interested in take pictures of each piece of it and, and all that. And when we bought the butterfly bucket and we got home, and I'm excited because it's got all these pretty flowers. And, well, little did I know that it, it came with its set of eggs on some of the plants and some little larva, caterpillars are larva, on uh, the fennel and the um, parsley that were in the butterfly bucket. Well, I looked at them and I looked at Lori and I'm like, uh, I think you're taking them home because <laughs> I have no idea what to do with them um, myself. I don't, I'm ner I was too nervous to attempt to take a caterpillar and feed it and take care of it. It's basically simple, um, but it, it's like having a, an animal a pet. You need to do it every day. You can't not do it. If you have it, you have to do it. Um, so as I learned how to take care of them, um, on that butterfly bucket, Gloria took home what we found, what caterpillars we found and any eggs that might've been on the, um, the milkweed. But little did we know that amongst that plant, some caterpillars probably stayed in the, in there that we didn't see cause they are very good hiders. Um, and about a week later, I happened to find a chrysalis of a, what would be a black swallowtail. And it was, it had formed its chrysalis on a stalk of a plant in the butterfly bucket. So it stayed there until Gloria came and showed me, you take, and if you see the bottom center of this, I have lidded containers. Those are the ones that I use, I've adapted to use now, the small round ones. You can get the large round ones and the small round ones. I use both sizes. But in the beginning, it was those taller kind that you would buy, like fruits and vegetables in your produce department. Um, you clean them out and keep the lids in the container. And in the beginning, I would actually not use the lid. I would use a piece of cheesecloth or a very fine mesh fabric and use a rubber band and keep that around the top. Um, and literally the, when it comes time, the caterpillar would climb to the top and he would do its thing on the material. Um, I've changed my, my way of doing things since then, and I will talk about that in a minute, but I just wanted to give you a heads up of why the lidded containers in this picture. So if you're interested and you wanted to start butterflying, a couple of the things I would do is I would get yourself a little butterfly guide or if you have an Audubon book that has your vocal information in it um, telling you what butterflies you'll find. Of course, you're going to find the tiger swallowtail because that's the Virginia butterfly. And here in Florida, um, our zebra longwing will find that monarchs are prevalent. Monarchs are prevalent up and down the East Coast all over most of the United States. Um, and so you can easily find um, milkweed. You want to use it when you're going to buy a host plant. You always want to try to use a native, and you don't want to get it from the big box stores. Try and get it from the garden centers and check with them to make sure they're not using pesticides. You don't. If you bring home a plant that has pesticides, you're only going to kill whatever the monarch comes and visits and lays an egg, and the eggs can hatch and eat your milkweed. And if it's got um, pesticides on it, they're just going to die. Um, and it's not happy. So, well, here's the things you need. You need a hose plant and nectar plants. Nectar plants will attract the butterflies and the hose plant for the type of butterfly that you are hoping to find eggs from. If you want to start from an egg, you would need the hose plant. Um, and monarchs are milkweed. Milk, um, they lay their eggs on milkweed. Most of the time, monarchs only lay one egg at a time. There are some butterflies that lay multiple eggs. 
um, at a time, but monarchs only lay one egg at a time, and it's usually on the underside of the milkweed leaves, but occasionally it will be on the top side. There's nothing wrong with that, but I think they try to, to put it on the bottom so that nobody else sees it. Um, but occasionally they'll be on the top. So you need your host plant and your nectar plant. I'm talking about monarchs here, we're talking about milkweed. In this picture, it's yellow milkweed. There's also, there's all sorts of milkweeds. Um, there's tropical milkweed, which has orangey, red, and yellow flowers on it. Um, but yellow milkweed is native in Florida, so we try to get your native plants. Um, the top center is that enclosure or a habitat. That one is one of the newer ones that I've gotten. Gloria had gotten one for Christmas this size. It's only about 14 inches tall. It has a little zipper on the side that you can put your hand in and do some things with, or it has a big zipper across the top. Um, you get them from Amazon. I got mine from Amazon. I actually started with, and I still use a very large one um, that's three feet long and two feet wide. Um, um, at first I was like, I'm gonna get this really big one because I'm gonna stick the milkweed plant inside of it and just let the caterpillars go ahead and feast on all their milkweed and then do their thing inside the habitat. You, you will, if you decide to get into butterflying, you will develop your own plan that works best for you as you go along. I have evolved. I now try not to, I try not to bring in the eggs so much and I try not to bring in the baby caterpillars. I try to let them do their thing and get bigger. So there's less work on my end. And then I take, if I find the bigger caterpillar, I can take them and put them in the container and only have to feed them so so many more days before they're going to uh, pupate and form their chrysalis. And uh, it, it's less time and, um, and less care. However, um, so many things happen outside and milkweed can, uh, one caterpillar can eat one whole entire milkweed plant by itself. So if you left it out there from the time it hatched from its egg and let it grow, through um, what we'll talk about is five instars that we'll talk about the life cycle of the butterfly and the caterpillars in, the, in a little bit, but um, they go through five diff different size changes before they actually um, form their chrysalis. Um, and while I'm talking about the chrysalis, a chrysalis is the butterflies, what some people call cocoon, and the technical word is chrysalis for butterfly, cocoon is for a moth. So there's a difference there. Um, but anyways, that is the solid thing. And we'll show you that later in pictures. But um, they go through five changes in size. They start the egg, goes from egg, then they'll change size five times, and then they'll form a chrysalis. So when I go outside, I find medium to larger size caterpillars. I put a little piece of a paper towel um, in the bottom of the containers. And I put the lid, which I have pierced holes in the lid with a safety pin. So I pierced many holes, let's say 50 holes are in the top of that small lid. Um, just for air, the egg doesn't need air. So if you did bring an egg in, you don't doesn't need air. It could stay in the bottom of the container. And we'll talk about the, the duration of their each different cycle once we get to another um, slide. But let me keep talking here. So we have a guide, which I show you that there's one for butterflies of the Western Chesapeake. There's also for one for butterflies of the Eastern Chesapeake, Maryland, DC, and Virginia. I went with Western because I believe that's your guide, found on Amazon or in a bookstore, I'm sure. Um, and then I use my butterflies of Central Florida because that's more key to where I'm at here. Um, again, they're not all going to be in there with that many different species of butterflies. You're not going to find them all inside these pamphlets or inside a book that you might have. Um, however, if you, if you are curious, you can, there are websites that you can actually um, put in your description and it can help you or you can Google it or you can go to the group page that I was telling you about. There's a Facebook group page for the greater Richmond area in Virginia and people, you put a picture up or ask a question and they will answer it. I do it all the time in my Florida butterflies group. Okay, next slide. Uh, okay, so the caterpillars also are different than uh, the butterflies. The butterflies all look different, the caterpillars all look different. 
Um, one of the butterflies that mimics a cat, uh, uh, the look of a monarch is the queen caterpillar. It's easy to tell the queen caterpillar from the monarch caterpillar because if you see here, there's a third set of antennas. So it's just odd. And I don't know, like I said, I'm not, I've not gone to school for this. I'm not a scientist. I've not done enough um, investigating. And I don't even know if there is an actual answer why there is a third set of antenna, but um, maybe it just looks scarier because most of what caterpillars are made to look is scary to keep the predators from from eating them and taking them away. Um, so anyways, here, I, there's one other thing I wanted to mention in this particular slide, is in the left slide, you see some black dots, they're really dark green, they're dark green close to black. That's caterpillar poop, and that's just a little bit. Um, caterpillars, they eat and eat and eat and eat and poop and poop and poop, and it's actually got a word, it's called frass, F-R-A-S-S, -S, um, caterpillar frass. Um, it, if you're going to raise caterpillars, when you, every day you need to clean their little containers out and start fresh and clean and give them fresh, clean um, host plant monarchs. Are, and monarchs and queens, they both eat the same host plant, which is the milkweed leaves. So you need to give them fresh, clean leaves and fresh, clean containers and get rid of their frass. Um, they, can, they can get sick from being around it too much. So you can go to the next slide. Okay, um, in April, my girlfriend, Gloria, that had, had um, got me into this said, hey, there's, you know, now that we're all doing these Zoom meetings and stuff, they were doing a virtual uh, webinar through the University of Florida Extension. Um, and this woman, Tia Sil Silvassi, she is, extremely knowledgeable on all the plants and the animals and the insects. Um, and she put on a presentation and she said, you were allowed to take the slides and use the slides. So that's why these two slides are here. And I just felt that it was very, very simple for me to share these two, to give you examples between the swallowtail, and this would include your tiger swallowtail, and the monarch of what plants you would need to have to, um, raise them to find an egg. So the host plants for the swallowtails are wild lime, wild cherry, magnolias, tulip trees, pond apple, pawpaw, and then of course the parsley family, parsley, fennel, dill, uh, basil. They, all of them, the, the female swallowtail will, if, if it's attracted to the area and sees those plants, they possibly could lay eggs on those plants. And I do have um, two swallowtail caterpillars right now that my butterfly bucket still has its parsley from last year. Some of the plants did die down, but there's parsley in it. And um, uh, recently a female um, black swallowtail visited and laid some eggs on that parsley. And I took the eggs in a, a day later than I should have, because all I did was talk about them to my friend Gloria. And she's like, oh, you didn't take them in. And I went out to get them and there were five originally. And then I only found three brought the three eggs in, they all hatched, and I started raising those three caterpillars. One of the caterpillars did not survive, so I have two. And just today, they have gone up to the top of the enclosure, and um, we'll talk about this, their um, metamorphosis more in a minute, but they are in the position to make their chrysalis, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So anyways, and that was on the parsley plant that's in my butterfly bucket. Um, and then if you go to the monarch, it's all different milkweeds. That, that, that's all they like to lay their eggs on. That's all the caterpillars are going to eat are milkweeds for the monarchs. Um, I have in, in, um, in the group pages, they have said if you run out, there are substitutes that you can use in a pinch. Um, I don't know. They're more of a, a vegetable variety, but I've never done it. And, you know, some people, it's 50-50. It's yes, you can use it in a pinch, you, if other percent, no, go get more milkweed. So um, you can look into that if you're interested. But I just try to keep more milkweed. It's, it's um, a battle. This last time I went to the, the garden center, I brought home 10 plants, 10 milkweed plants. I put a few outside along the house and let the monarchs lay their eggs, and there's many caterpillars out there of all different sizes, and eggs are out there. 
And then I kept four plants inside my enclosure to feed the caterpillars that as I'm bringing them in, I have a few plants that don't have any eggs with caterpillars on them, so they're not gonna get eaten, so that I can use the leaves from those plants. We can go to the next slide. Okay, here we are in the metamorphosis cycle of a butterfly. All butterflies go through the same metamorphosis cycle. Um, this one that I'm depicting on this, these slides, these are all my pictures, starts with the life cycle of the butterfly, the egg. And the egg, again, the monarchs lay one egg at a time. A female monarch in her lifespan could lay between three and 400 eggs, I believe it is in her lifespan, which is a few weeks usually. Um, they mate multiple times and they lay eggs and, and um, they're always one egg. Although one leaf can have more than one egg on it, they can come back and lay another egg on the same leaf. This picture only has the one egg and they're very tiny. I, sometimes I need to have my reading glasses on to find them on the plants. So you can usually see a little yellow dot the monarchs have like little ridges in them, um, and they're, they're, they kind of sit up a little bit and are uh, cylind cylindrical, um, and they're very small. And then the egg, from the egg, you'll have your caterpillar. There's a hungry caterpillar right there. And then the caterpillar will go over and he'll form his chrysalis, his or hers, and then you'll have your monarch. Um, come out of that chrysalis and the word for when they're born or when they emerge from their chrysalis is actually eclose which kind of sounds backwards to me but that's the word it's the, they eclose from their chrysalis they emerge they eclose um, so I want to tell you the life cycles and how long they are so I wrote I put notes down for myself here and the monarch the egg it, <laughs> It said the egg could be from one day to five days. I have not had an egg that hatched the same day that it was laid. So um, I usually three to five days is what I usually see if I bring in a leaf with the egg on it and I put it in a little container and keep an eye on it. It's usually three to five days. And then all of a sudden you'll see this teeny tiny little caterpillar. It's teeny tiny, um, cute little thing. And they will go through five stages as a caterpillar. And being a caterpillar, they last about nine to 16 days of being a caterpillar. But during that time, they change sizes five times. And each, it's called an instar when they change. And they literally shed their whole skin. And sometimes you might catch it or you might catch some, some of their old, their old their old skin, their old outside, before it disappears. The reason it disappears is because they eat it, okay? So they, they change sizes five times. The one in this picture is probably in its fourth instar, if not its fifth instar. Um, and then after its fifth instar, and it's all done eating and eating and eating, um, and it, develop, it decides it has enough energy built up that it's going to crawl to the top. Usually it, it'll, they can travel far, far away, but in an enclosure, they're not going anywhere, but in the area that you give them. And in the beginning, like I said, I would take those taller produce containers and I would butter, um, rubber band a piece of cheesecloth or fine mesh material to the top of that. And they literally would crawl, climb up to the top. And what they would do is they make a silk button on them from their bottom and they make a silk button and they attach themselves with the silk thready button and then within a day of doing the button they will form a J and I'll show you a picture later on they'll, they'll fall like hang in a J from the button the caterpillar itself will look like a J and within 24 hours of in being in the J position they will then form their chrysalis and this one is a little bit um, not brand new. There will be one later on. This one is probably, mm, I would say, three, four, or five days because you may notice, depending on your screen, that you can almost start seeing through it where you can make out the wing inside of that. Um, and it's usually a brighter green when they're fresh and brand new. And you'll see these gold dots, which you can see a couple of the gold dots on the bottom and across the top. 
they're it's they're amazing the the gold on them because nobody really knows what the purpose is that the dots are there um we believe they come from the yellow of the skin of the caterpillar but nobody scientifically really knows and the chrysalis will be again so the caterpillar is mine for for a monarch it's different for all kinds of caterpillars but for a monarch it's um in a caterpillar nine to 16 days and then a chrysalis from 10 to 14 days and and then the butterfly will be closed now let me say it's all weather well not weather temperature dependent you know climate uh, plays a role in this so here in florida we're mostly warm all the time we're i'm re i can raise monarchs all year long they're always here um there's less of them dip in cooler season than there are in the warmer season and some of the life cycle, some of these pro, some of the step stages, um, go quicker if it's warmer, and slow down if it's colder. And monarchs are um, cold-blooded, so they they need a certain temperature to actually be able to fly around and um, survive. Um, and the reason I showed this particular picture of this monarch is because it's starting the life cycle all over again. It's actually laying an egg on the bottom of that, of that um, milkweed plant there. So it was the whole cycle. And if you go to the next slide, this is um, the closure of, the, of a monarch. So like I said before, when a monarch's done eating and they've gone through its five changes, five instars, it's going to go to the top and this is one of my pictures from my beginning and you see that it's a piece of material at the top of a container and they made its little silk button at the tippy top there and it's hanging in a J. They all hang in a J. And then uh, within 24 hours they form this chrysalis. This particular chrysalis that I've got on this picture, the green one, that one just formed yesterday um, from uh, uh, one of my monarch caterpillars. So, and you can see the pretty shiny gold dots and the little gold line at the top. Um, I'm not showing you in this picture, but the tippy top right by the stem there, um, there are black marks and I don't know which one off the top of my head, but if you Googled it, there's a way to tell the sex of the chrysalis by the little black marks that are at the top of it. Um, and that's not showing it there, but I just wanted to mention that. And the next picture of that chrysalis is right before the caterpillar, I mean, the fully grown adult butterfly is going to emerge or you close from the chrysalis. And what happens is the chrysalis starts getting darker as it approaches the day that it's going to close. And then the chrysalis shell becomes basically transparent and you're seeing the complete inside of the monarch. And then in, in monarch, when it closes, some of them are very quick within a minute, and some of them take a few minutes, depending on how much energy they're, they're expelling to get them out of the shell. And at first, their wings are all crumpled, and then they have to hang and dry, and they take, their body is, their abdomen on their body is very fat when they first are born, and they pump the juice is from their body into their veins of their wings to straighten them out. Um, there are there are some problems that can happen. No, it's never perfect. Most of the time, you get a butterfly that goes through the changes just the right way, but there are some issues. We'll talk about that later. Um, but butterflies do need to hang on their and they usually will hang from the shell of their own chrysalis. But then they start moving around and they get closer to the they'll get, grab onto the top or the side anything that they can grab onto. And they'll hang, and they need to hang for a few hours, let their wings completely dry. You'll know when they're ready to release because they'll start flapping around more. They'll move around more and they'll flap around. They might even take a little flight inside the cage or the habitat. And that's when you'll want to take them out to release. And the conditions have to be right. It has to be nice, not rainy, um, and try, try for a warm, warm day. Um, and you can hold on to your butterfly for a day, 24 hours, if necessary. Um, if you have to hold on to it longer, you should find some nectar sources to provide so that it can nectar. It doesn't need nectar on the first 24 hours. Though. Okay, you can go to the next slide. And this is the same, a, a metamorphosis of a black swallowtail. And you can start at the tippy top left 
And there's two black swallowtail eggs on my parsley. These are from this year. Um, two of the three that I've, well, the third one didn't make it, but two eggs there. And I brought the eggs in and they hatched. And the next picture shows you caterpillars that are probably, these are swallowtails. One interesting thing about swallowtails is there are five instars. They change sizes, but they also change appearance. They look different in every one of their five instars. Um, the first one that is there is probably their second going into their third instar. And then the third one down there where you're at now with the pointer. I took a picture of those two and I forced them to show their little orange antennas that has a, a, a special word for it. Um, let me go to my slide and see if I put it down here. Uh, it is, let me see if I can. It's called an osmaterium. I won't ever remember that word. I don't know why it's called that, but they look like little orange antennas and they don't stay out all the time. They pop them out when they get um, startled and they actually emit a little smell too. They're harmless to human beings, but they kind of protect the caterpillars from other insects and things. Um, and they kind of look scarier, so that also helps them. But they don't stay out very long. Like, I, I just brushed up a piece of parsley against them and made them stick them out to get the picture. And within 10 seconds, they go back in. Um, but it's kind of, kids get a big kick out of it if you do that. Um, and to me, these, the caterpillars for the swallowtails, they just remind me of the Chinese dragons that you see when you see the, like, when it's Chinese New Year and you see the Chinese dragon, those paper dragons. They, they, they just look like that shape. And then the top center picture is a, um, probably a fourth to fifth instar of a black swallowtail caterpillar, and that one's eating fennel. Now, they will eat the parsley and the fennel, all, all the same, same from the same family, and that, those are all in my butterfly bucket, and they, they like all of that. Um, the next center left picture, bottom, that is the chrysalis, of the black swallowtail that was eating that fennel. And if you can see, it might be hard because the picture's small, but there is like a, a, it's tilted from the bottom of the stem. The button, the silk button's on the bottom, but then it's hanging off the stem and it's got another piece of silk. It's kind of like um, a belt, a silk belt holding it in that position. Um, and it kind of mimics looking like a leaf. So um, a swallowtail's chrysalis, could be green and it could be brown and any shades of green or brown. And usually it's based on what the surrounding area is like. And as you can see, this one is the one that I discovered in my butterfly bucket after thinking that I had given Gloria all of the caterpillars that came home with me on the bucket and that we discovered it on the plant. So then we cut the piece, that piece of plant out and I put it in the, the next picture over before the butterfly closed, you can see the stalk of the plant right to the right side of that butterfly. And we put it in that container and within uh, the, the, the certain period of time, and it was like less than two weeks, um, it, it closed. And this is a black butterfly, a black, black swallowtail, but the outside, the underwings have a lot more coloring than the upper side, the top wings, because, um, the top wings only have yellow and the black, but the bottom, the underside shows you more oranges and blues. Um, and then we released, that was my very first release of a butterfly. And then I started more into um, monarchs. I, have, I just have black swallowtails now. I have two that are going to form their chrysalis. They have, they have done their jaying and they put, made their button and they have their silk belt, but they haven't formed their chrysalis yet. You know the next slide. And this is another picture of telling sexes. Okay, so these are both monarchs, and the male monarch's on the left, and the female monarch's on the right, and the male monarch has two male dots, the dots. In other butterflies, the scientists say that that's their male hormone in those two dots. But for some reason, they don't believe it's the same. It doesn't act the same in the monarch species. Um, I I believe it does. But if you read up on it, they, they don't say that the hormone is emitted like it is in other species. 
the female has darker veins, thicker, thicker veins, really. It's, they're not darker, they're really thicker. Um, and she doesn't have those two dots. And so that, that makes it easy to tell the females from the males on monarchs. Other species, it's a little more difficult because it's basically the colorings that tell you the difference between females and males. And you have to remember each different species, what the male color looks like and the female color looks like. It's easy on the monarchs. To me, it is at least. Okay, next slide. Okay, so we talked about some predators and this picture on the left is a sad picture, but okay, we all have to remember the food chain, so I kind of got to get over it, but we're all, all of us down here that do this as a hobby or trying to help the butterflies survive, we don't like to see this, but that wasp is literally eating a baby caterpillar, and lizards would love to do that too, um, and that's a lizard in my bushes that is just sitting there waiting to chomp on a, a baby caterpillar and even eggs. Um, I've seen at Gloria, that left picture was a wasp on Gloria's giant milkweed. So giant milkweed is a, uh, in the milkweed family, but it's huge, has huge leaves and beautiful, huge, unique purplish flowers. So if you have a giant milkweed, that plant will last a lot longer for you to feed caterpillars than a regular milkweed plant. But this was in Gloria's yard, and I literally, we were literally looking at the eggs that had been laid because we saw the monarchs laying the eggs. And this and the caterpillar's little crop and this cat this wasp came over and I was like oh look at this wasp and little did I know I was sitting there eating a uh, baby caterpillar but I happened to catch it um, and other things that will take eggs we we watched the ants the ants if the ants are on your milkweed plants they're literally waiting for that monarch to come and lay the egg so they can just literally just carry the egg away which is really interesting because you can't just rub the egg off the leaf. But I guess as soon as it's laid, if the ant gets it at that right second, it's not adhered to the leaf yet enough, and they take, they just carry it away and make a meal out of it. So ants, spiders, um, the wasps, the lizards, and then birds. Um, birds actually, most birds will eat caterpillars. I've not seen any eating any of the caterpillars or butterflies flying around or crawling around here. However, I, I have read that um, birds love caterpillars to bring back to the nest for the babies because their um, digestive system can't handle a lot of things yet and caterpillars are perfect food for baby birds okay you can go to oh uh, you know while i'm here i wanted to talk about other problems that are not visual not on that slide so you can leave it there if you want um uh, there are other problems. There's diseases, and one of the diseases is OE, and I can't pronounce the the actual scientific name, but um, it is actually a parasite. And here comes my landscaper to trim my bushes. So if you can't hear me, please let me know. Um, the parasite will actually leave leave spores, um, which which the the adult monarch butterfly will actually pick up the spores and then it gets transmitted to the egg and the, and the egg has a spore and it, it's a, it goes through the whole life cycle and it's and it if it becomes another adult it can then leave spores and it's a it's a parasite it's not good for the butterflies um, it's it's actually devastating to the numbers of monarchs and they're trying to find a way to eradicate it but um, so there are people and one of Gloria's friends that have got her interested, has taught her, I'm not, I have not done it, but you can actually using a bleach solution, one part bleach to 20 parts water or something like that. And you clean the eggs, and you clean your milkweed. Um, but it's gotta be for like one minute only. And then you have to rinse it for at least one minute. It's a process and that, that will clean the, uh, parasite off of the egg um, but we haven't had that much trouble with that OE here that we're aware of okay so you're on this one and now we're just going to go through some slides showing you some of my pictures this is a male monarch you can obviously see the male dots I'm hoping they're going to be very fast with the landscaping then you can um, go ahead then this is a little fiery skipper on the porch of plant that I have hanging outside. There's several different skippers now. Some skippers that, like this and the horse's dusky wing before, 
they're brown. So some people think, oh, they're, they're moths because they think brown flying things are moths. These are actually butterflies. Um, moths and butterflies are completely different. Um, okay. This is, okay, this is the mama black swallowtail that laid the eggs on my parsley just a few weeks ago. And she is all tattered. She doesn't even have, she hardly has any of a left tail, but, and absolutely no right tail. Um, but she still manages to get around and she still manages to lay eggs. Um, she was a beat up old lady. Um, and her babies have been taken care of by me and hopefully we'll have two beautiful black swallowtails to release in about two weeks. Okay. Okay, this is a swallowtail. That's the, the bigger picture of that same swallowtail caterpillar munching on the fennel. I just think they're such cute caterpillars. I really like them. The, um, the black swallowtail caterpillars are really interesting looking. You can see their bottom feedy things holding onto that stalk of that plant. It's just, it's just so interesting. So. And then that's that, that same one. And this one was the one that, well, this is a different one that formed, because it was after I found that it formed the J. Um, and there's this little silk belt hanging from there and this button is at the bottom. And then the chrysalis was formed later, right? And this is popcorn cassia plant at my friend Gloria's house. And those little tiny yellow specks are um, her, uh, I believe they're the polydomus swallowtail eggs. And they, leave, they lay them on the flower, that's the flower before it burst open. The eggs are very small. I just have the picture enlarged a lot so you can see them. Uh, but they are hard to see. And they're always at the, tip, tip, at the tops of the flowers or at the tips, um, right, yeah. Just a, a, that one you can see there's like four eggs on, on just that one cluster of flowers. Um, but they only lay one egg at a time also and they probably just came back and laid more eggs on that same flower. And this is the, the eggs, this is Gloria's, um, and this is her, um, cloudless sulfur. So this is one of the larger, larger yellow sulfurs. And that, so those eggs could have either been, oh no, they're not polydomus swallowtails, they're all sulfurs. I'm sorry, I messed you up on the, on the popcorn cassia, only the sulfur butterflies. That's a host plant for sulfur butterflies. So this cloudless sulfur, those eggs were probably for this cloudless sulfur. Um, and also she also raises orange barred sulfurs. Um, so it could have been one or the other for those eggs, but this is the one that just came out of its, it's a um, little, it's chrysalis, a different shape chrysalis, very unique looking. And he just, they closed, he or she just, he closed. And the next picture is right after releasing it. And then it just rested on a plant with those big giant yellow eyes. They're just very, very pretty. So, um, yep. I love them all. I love all the butterflies. They're all beautiful. And this is a, another skipper. This is a monk skipper. And that was nectaring on my purple porterweed. So um, this one, I, it wasn't in my little guide. So I had to put, post this picture in the group page. And the guide, there's a guy there, Jeff Ward, on the Florida Butterfly Groups. He knows everything. And he told me that that was a monk skipper. So that was fun to find. I always get excited when you see something you've never seen before. Okay, next slide. And then we're back at, that's just a, that's a queen that looks like a monarch, but remember the, the queen has the dots on the wings that the monarch does not have. And the next picture is going to show you the upper wings of the queen. And now you can see, you can probably, tell, this is a male because it has the two dots like a monarch does, but you can see that it doesn't have that window painting like the monarchs have that, you know, those window painting vein lines so that you can actually tell a queen better from this position from looking at the wings from the top than you can from the under wing side. So that is why I wanted to show you that picture so you could see the big difference there. Um, the next picture. Oh, this is, oh, this is a gulf fritillary, another beautiful butterfly that flies around. 
um, and that's the Gulf Fritillary, and Gloria does raise them, and they like passion vines. And that's what, so they leave, their host plant is passion vines, and so they'll, they'll lay their eggs on the, the, they love the little, those little curly tendrils, and they like to leave it like right at the tip of the curly tendril on the passion vine. But she um, has raised these too, and their caterpillars are like an orangey brownish color with like hairy, look, like hairy things on them. So, but anyways, that's a, that's a Gulf Fritillary, a pretty bad one. Okay, and this is just a picture of four different sizes of the five instars of a caterpillar. What's not shown is the brand new baby one um, at one day old. So this is four to, the first one on the bottom left is like the second instar. It's probably two to three days old. Then three to four or five days old. The top left is the third instar. Then the bottom right is a fourth instar, which is a few days two to three days after that first one. And then again, another two to three days later, you get your last size of your caterpillar, the fifth in the star. Before that one says, I'm done eating, I'm gonna go make my chrysalis. And then within, a, about within 10 days, two weeks, you'll have your butterfly. Um, and the next. Hey, Paulette, we have a question. Yes. yes. Um, uh, does the monarch need an entire milkweed plant to survive? Does it need, um, it depends on the size of the milkweed plant and how many leaves, um, but it, it has been known that a monarch can, one, one monarch caterpillar can eat all the leaves off of an average size, like one plant that you would pick up at the, at the garden center, an average size plant. Do you have me on? I can actually grab one of my plants and show. Yeah, I can stop sharing and show you. Um, show Are we you. running out of time now? Uh, well, it's it's four o'clock. <laughs> I, mean, I can't believe that it went on an hour. Oh, I, I was going to grab you a plant, but anyways, yes, well, they can. That one caterpillar can. So you may want to um, have more than that. And how many more leaves? I was just showing you a couple other pictures. There's only two more, three more, no, four more pictures, I think, or something like that. It was just a couple more pictures. You want me to share? Okay, hold, please. I can't believe that that hour went by fast. <laughs> Okay, so that's just a munching caterpillar face on. That's its face. You can't even see where, where its eyes or anything are. That's just munching, munching, munching. And they do eat the flower part. That's the beginning of the pupating. So pu 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 pupating into their chrysalis. So a pupa, you know. Um, I call it unzipping. It's like somebody, can somebody unzip my zipper for me, please? <laughs> because it look, looks like their body is unzipping. And they literally turn inside out, and then that whole thing, the whole body will become green. And that when the, the outside of the body comes to the tippy top, their face mask literally falls off to the ground. Hmm. So the rest of the caterpillar stays inside the chrysalis, becomes a thing of mush, and gets reformatted. So it's just amazing. This is a zebra longwing, our Florida state butterfly caterpillar. And Gloria, they like passion vines, and she has been lucky to have a passion vine, and find, we found this one a couple of weeks ago on her passion vine. So she should be having a zebra butterfly. I think she already released it, it might have already be closed. But that's what they look like, white with all those black spiky things. And that's a baby, that's a brand new, just hatched out of its egg, monarch caterpillar. And the last picture I just wanted to show you, these are polydomus swallowtails, another swallowtail from the swallowtail family. But there are two chrysalises, these are glorious that I took last year when she was first showing me about the butterflies. And notice the two totally different colors. It, it's, they're both fine. They're both, it's just, they could be green, brown, and any shade of green and any shade of brown. And they both were both beautiful butterflies when they ate closed. And that's the whole slideshow. So, I don't know. Wowzers, that was wonderful. <laughs>